Welcome to the sixth event of the Hotelplanner.com PGA Euro Pro Tour. It's the first of four visits we'll be making to the beautiful Scottish countryside. And today we're here at the Newmacker Golf Club just outside Aberdeen. Welcome to the programme and to the Paul Laurie Foundation Granite City Classic, hosted here at the Hawks Hill course at the new Macca Golf Club. It's a relatively young course, it's only 25 years old, and it's created by the legendary course designer Dave Thomas. It's highly regarded by pros and amateurs alike, and you'll get to know it a little bit better over the next couple of hours in another action-packed show. Paul Howard's joined us, club ace leader. All the best, Marcus. Cheers, Thank, Thank you. you very much for your time. Cheers. Come on. Plenty to look forward to in today's show and don't forget if you want to get in touch you can via Twitter at PGA Euro Pro Tour or you can search for us on Facebook. We'd love to hear from you just like we have been doing for our Challenge John feature which you're going to get a chance to see later on in the show. Before we get into the action here's a quick reminder of how our first five events of the season have finished. So five events down, four different winners, and the race to Desert Springs has a runaway leader, but a tightly bunched chasing pack. Gary King has his nose in front by some £6,000, with Darren Wright, his closest challenger. Sam Connor's win at Longhurst Hall catapulted him into third place, while similarly the win at Cumberwell Park by Marcus Armitage has moved him into fourth. For Alan Dunbar in fifth, it's two second places in Wales and at Burr Hill that have helped him to just over £11,000 and a significant gap over those chasing the top five places and a challenge tour card. So the scene's almost set, heading into our final round. But before we head up to the commentary box, why don't we hear from our resident pro, John E. Morgan, on this magnificent Hawks Hill course here at the Newmacker Golf Club. Well, thank you, Laura. Here at Newmacker, I mean, what a place it is. Just bordering on 6,800 yards long. And you can see this is one of them, the 10th hole. Beautiful tee box right back here, swoops down, comes over this lake. I mean, the boys might want to take it on, you know, if they push the tee up a little bit forward, but it's at 320 yards long. And there's many holes like this. You've got like loads of big trees everywhere that can play with your ball and ricochet off it. That's what gives it its uniqueness. And also, it's only 25 years old. I mean, it looks like it's been around for centuries because you've got beautiful lakes, got big deep bunkers they kind of giving it the old like linksy feel deepy bunker feel to it all and you know the greens are nice and subtle but like I say there's loads and loads of lovely old trees wrapped around this golf course loads and loads of character and the boys are gonna love it back to you thanks John as you heard him say there a relatively new course that looks like it's been here for centuries is a testament to the course designer and the greenkeeping staff here at the new Macca Golf Club. It's time now for us to pass over to our commentary team, former Ryder Cup player Andrew Coulter, our very own John E. Morgan, but first, Simon Golding. Thank you, Laura. Well, what a fabulous new challenge for our Euro Pro Tour players this week. The course in superb condition. And uh, going into round one, the man that was in super condition himself was uh, this man, Mark Young. 
fabulous round on day one to get himself to nine under and put himself in the driving seat at the start of the tournament. In round two, well, Young was still there or thereabouts. A round of two under, taking him to 11 under in total after two days, but uh, he had some company. Ward moved himself to 12 under, but he wasn't the top man come the end of the second day. That honor belonged to this man, Paul Howard. Fabulous amateur career, now turned professional in 2015, and 13 under after 36 holes here at Newmarket. Well, confirmation then on the leaderboard here at the Paul Laurie Foundation Granite City Classic. Paul Howard will be heading into that final round with a single shot lead. Let's hear from the leader. He should be feeling pretty confident. Well, obviously I'm leading, so hopefully I can continue to do what I've done the first two days. And if we do that, hopefully I'll come out on top at the end of the day. Um, but there's a lot of guys out there who could probably overtake me. The course is quite scorable, so I'll just try and do the best I can today and see hopefully it's good enough. So Paul Howard, the man that everybody will be chasing in this final round. And Daniel Gavin's certainly got that chase off to a very good start. The man who graduated to the Challenge Tour in 2013 from the Euro Pro, but has chosen this season to come back to the fold of the Euro Pro Tour. And a very good start. Birdie, birdie that took him to uh, nine under and then continued the charge at three. Another birdie to take himself to double figures under the card. And Daniel Gavin's looking in very good shape at the start of his final round. Well, another man also getting things moving. Paul Shields making a birdie. Uh, the second to move himself to nine under. And Greg Hutchin also with a birdie. Brightly colored ball, brightly colored hat, brightly colored start for the Scotsman. Moves himself to uh, 11 under. And joined by a very talented player, Gareth Wright. Second shot into uh, the first. Set up a very nice birdie opportunity. And the fabulous conditions today, as they have been for the last few days, should provide us with some really good scoring and a very, very interesting final round. So the Welshman is in the mix. And Gary King, well, what of the man that has already won twice on the Euro Pro Tour this season? He's off to a very good start in his final round. 11 under the card and on the back nine could do some damage. Well, I'm delighted to say alongside me, Andrew Coltart and Johnny Morgan, Looking forward to a final round of golf on what is effectively, guys, a field of dreams. A course built, what, 25 years ago now by a man who had a vision, and it really is a beautiful, beautiful venue. It's a beauty, Simon. It really is. I mean, 25 years old. I mean, that's all it is. It's unbelievable. Looks like it's been around for donkeys. Yeah, it looks fantastic, and in tremendous condition as well. Nice to see the weather holding up as well for these players. Beautiful tee shot there. And Mr Shields. This for a birdie. Can he chip it in? Keep the momentum going. Oh, lovely shot. Nicely played there. Well done. Well done. Good call, Johnny. Oh, yeah, it was indeed. Take that. Just in the side door. Take them any way they come. Well, playing alongside Daniel Gavins today, and that is a pair with a momentum to relish. What a start. As we come to the first, Paul Howard. Now, this man, rich vein of form, playing some majestic golf. Standing on the first over 400 yards, he's a brute. And just the fairway metal for the tournament leader. Now you're getting a nice little bounce in off the cush there. That's perfect. Great tee shot. Now, Mark Young, the man that set the pace on day one. There is a big score out there, we know that. And Mark Young proved it with his nine under. Followed it up nicely on day two, and he will be fancying his chances here. I find though these boys, it's all about the course management. It's very tight in areas, you know, bottlenecks at perfect yardages off the tee. So the boys having to lay up or take it on. Ball a little bit below the feet here. This should suit them to that back right pin. Well, that was a lovely shot. Very sensible, good course management. Giving himself a little quirky one coming back, but back to Ward. Second shot, can he follow suit? Yeah, Simon Ward, the Irishman, currently unattached. Got at this one, very hard, and he's got the control that he was looking for as well. 
some beautiful stuff into the first green. Back to Young then with his second. Into this par five. Very narrow entrance into this green. A draw in. A little bit unlucky then. That was a firm bounce just off the shoulder of the bunker. But that's two good shots to there. That's an outside eagle chance. He's loving his swing at the moment. He's playing some great shots. Now Howard for a birdie. What a start this will be for the final day. Settle the nerves if there is any. Sets it going down the hill. Oh, and didn't come back. So close but yet so far. But a nice steady start for the leader. Yeah, good stuff from the man who had a very successful amateur career, underpinned uh, a very fine England A team over some years, had success in Europe and South America, but has turned pro this year. And, uh, well, that's unfortunate for Young, left himself with a bit of work for Birdie. After a lovely second in here, straight up the hill, can he convert? He can, beautiful, great start. Oh, Ward will take that joint leader then with his playing partner now at 13 under. Oh, very good indeed. Eddie Young, these are the ones, you know, you think to yourself, I need a birdie this hole. You don't want to be walking away with a par, and he doesn't. He makes that birdie. Great start for Young, 12 under. Well, today shaping up to be one of our, our tightest final days so far this season. Howard, uh, not a great start, unfortunately, to the second. Drove it into the trees and has had to chip out to here. So a bit of repair work to be done. And that sounded like contact with the trees again. A little bit fortunate that it dropped out green side there. He's got plenty green to work with. A fairly straightforward chip, but yeah, struggling down this hole. Very young. First shot on the third. Big tall towering iron this very tight landing zone on this par four. Ward showed us great control from the fairway at the first. We'll be looking for the same again here. <laughs> He's got the Oof. ball on a string at the moment. Set the juice loose about this hoose. Is that how you say it, Colts? Not even close, John, but don't worry about it. <laughs> now right. from the left side. <laughs> A young flipping one in there. Beautiful hole, this. Now, a little bit of pondering here from uh, Howard. Doesn't want to concede too much early doors. It's released. And it's gone quite a ways past. Don't fancy that part on the way back. A big Gareth right played four rounds in the Open Championship at Muirfield a couple of years ago. So he's can handle the pressure. Oh, just a little bit shy. Good line. Yeah, strong player. Great iron player, isn't he? Andrew. He hits it miles as well. <laughs> he does it at miles. miles. I mean, just look at him. Birdie for Ward. So it's not a birdie birdie start for the Irishman. A little bit of swagger up to that part. I like to see that. It's going to have to settle for par by the looks of it. This was a lovely little shot to here, just controlling the spin nicely. It's a good stroke. Yeah, comfortably done. Joint leader, Mark Young. There's an Englishman in amongst it here in Aberdeen. Alongside this man, Howard. Very, very important part, this one. Oh, big spin out. Left himself with a bit of work to be done. Bit of meat left on this boom. Yes, the lead has gone, I'm afraid, for the man that has played so well over the last couple of days and finds himself trailing by one shot. So already plenty of movement on this scoreboard. Mark Young and Simon Ward take over as the co-leaders. And Paul Howard drops down into third position. But as you can see, it is very, very tight. And there's plenty of quality still out on the course. 
that can set a really good clubhouse lead. Well, still to come, John guides us around the course with his usual brand of excitement and shot making. Now that is what you call a snapperoo. And we test the players on their knowledge of the Ryder Cup. Clock starts now. Glen Eagles, Celtic Manor, the Belfry, Medina, Oakland Hill. Welcome back to Newmarket and the Paul Laurie Foundation Granite City Classic final round action. And I'm delighted to say that we've already had a bit of excitement, some movement on the leaderboard. Mark Young and Simon Ward find themselves in joint top position at 13 under, which is the score that Paul Howard was on at the start of the day for a single shot lead. But he's conceded one at the second. So we have a change and we've certainly got a contest today on uh, what is a beautiful course, Andrew. Yeah, certainly is. It looks fantastic. And as John has said, it's so important that you find the fairway with these tee shots. And another excellent one right there. Yeah, dissecting a fairway, Andrew. Beautiful shot to the third. Mr. Ward out with the iron. Definitely going for position. Nice solid swing, isn't it? Yeah, nice rhythm to that. Let's see how it ends up. Perfect. Beautiful tee shot. Job done. Now, with conditions as wonderful as they are today, John, which kind of golfer do you think is going to come out on top? Well, this man here, Mr. Well, he's got all the knowledge you can think of. I mean, played the Open a couple of years ago, wasn't it, Andrew? And uh, done extremely well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, just getting into an Open Championship is great, but making the cut is fantastic. Uh, how old? So a lovely swing. Nice brisk action. Yeah, the Southport and Ainsdale man. Lancashire County player, England A player, but now in the pro ranks. Oh, what a different feeling that must be, guys, moving from, uh, well, the kind of brotherhood of being in a team, in a county team, in an international team, moving into the professional ranks. What are the big differences? Uh, well, very individual becomes, you know, less of a team effort. Um, you know, Andrew will have more experience with this, being Ryder Cupper and everything like that. I think you're right. You just, you know, you are more on your own, but you're just so excited about your future and about what, you know, what the game holds for you that you're just focused intently on that. And, you know, how it looks like he's dedicated. It looks like he's got great goals. A little bit wayward there from Ward. A little bit of help from the slope. That's an awkward one. Yeah, and that spin that he's been getting on the ball all day has uh, just helped him a bit there. He's got some whip through the ball. That's how he's able to generate so much of the spin. But as we come back to Young, this man with a very lofty club in his hand, coming up way short. He definitely got a bit of turf before the ball on that one, Andrew. Yeah, I misjudged that one. Let's see how his short game is. Anyway, back to Howard. Yeah, this man's 6'2", 6'3". He's a big lad. Big wide art hits the ball a mile. Bit of backspin here, coming back to the hole. Not bad at all. Sets up a nice birdie opportunity. A young in the bunker. Yeah, looks like he's got a bit of slope on this one. Mm. Uh, well, not bad. Couldn't have been the best of lies. Uh, I wonder if that was a little bit plug of runes. I'm not sure. Up in the lip. It just. You know, flumped it out and try and let it release down to the hole. As we see Ward now playing this one, absolutely oh, oh, oh. fantastic. It's trick shot time for the Irishman. The trick of that one is really getting your weight with the slope, though, and it's not easy. Sometimes you, people, you know, the guys at home, the amateurs, you're listening. You know, don't get on your back foot and try and lob it up in the air. You know, that's the normal thing. Then you hit the ground and it scuttles on through the green. Ward played it great, and Gareth, well, not so great. That one went away from him. Beautiful second shot here, right over the top of the flag. Not a lot of movement, just outside the right, perhaps. Oh, they're not dropping for him at the moment, for young Howard. Yeah, not to be, not to be. Not plenty of time yet, just going to remain patient. Young then. Young, straight and firm. Oh. Just a little wee blocker. Well, 
annoy him a little bit. Just a short iron into the green there. They drop a short there. That's unfortunate. That's a lack of concentration, though, isn't it? Really, Andrew, when you come to those, uh, is it a bit lazy in the head? We're all, we're all, we all do it. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, focus. Yeah, you just, you know, you just forget to get the job done. Yeah, really, you needed to throw that one up at the flag. Is a lovely putt. Oh, ho, ho. Gary lovely King, two-time winner on our Euro Pro Tour, winning the first two events at Celtic Manor and Frilford Heath. And he's making his way round the course very nicely. He's going to set a pretty good clubhouse score the rate he's going. And then it'll have a bit of a wait to see how competitive that's going to be. He's playing with my friend there, Sandeep Grohl. He used to play for an England team with him. Now he's in good company. Sandeep can play some good golf as well. Now Gareth Wright for his part. And does manage to hang on to it. Good confidence strike from him. Now let's move to the fifth and hear more about that from John E. Morgan. Well... Here at the fifth hole, 333 yards, and there's a little teaser. I mean, you've got this bunker here, it's about 209 yards to, if you want to go and reach it with a, probably about a five or a four iron to reach that bunker, but you come out to the left here, bit of room to work with, not much, you've still got a little great shot, but the boys will be thinking, do I get driver out and have a crack at this green? Well, if you did, you've got a few bunkers, you've got some scattered trees, you've got thick rough in amongst the trees as well, very dodgy to a very, very narrow green. I mean, today, pin, back, left, very accessible for the boys. I mean, I'm stood here, I've hit a nice shot off the tee, only got 120 yards left into the screen, which is perfect. You're gonna make the ball dance around the flag, especially at these boys level. So anyway, here we go. I got a little soft gap wedge. I'm just gonna take this flag on, that's back left. It's absolutely beautiful around here. Here are the birds and the bees, absolutely still as crazy here, beautiful. Straight at it, has it got the legs? Not my best effort, but I tell you what, what a cracker of a hole. I love it. John E. Morgan still as crazy after all these years. Great shot, John. Yeah, cuckoo comes to mind, Simon. <laughs> now, Mark Young, nobody wants to go cuckoo in this final round. And uh, the door is open. It really is for somebody to grab this by the scruff of the neck. And I just wonder how good King can be on the closing stretch. Well, King is a, a player. Over the last couple of years, been on this tour, been very fringy, you know, having his moments, chucking in a massive low round, and then all of a sudden able to put three rounds together and come up trumps and win a tournament. Another sand down for Young. Let's see if he gets it right this time. No breeze to speak of. Yeah, right up at the flag. Yeah, not to be, Andrew. Yeah, he's just, uh, he's lacking his wedge play over the last two, three holes. Just not coming off for him. Yeah, the smile has uh, suddenly disappeared, I'm afraid, from Mark Young's face. Now back to Paul Howard, another birdie opportunity. Even well left here, a bit of break. And he's not compensated for it enough. Big swing of that one. Leave himself with a, well, just no more than a two-footer. Straight up the slope, shouldn't be a problem. It's fascinating to see the way this course is still testing the players on day three. He's yielded a couple of low scores. This man had one of them on the first day. But he's been asked a few questions now in this final round. He's young. And almost from a similar line to his playing partner. Ward, a little bit out the left. Better line, pace. Just lacking. Yeah, he went to school on Howard. Did this ward, just not hitting it. Needed the pace of Howard, and it would have definitely been in. That's a solid bar out. For Young to stay at 12 under. Oh, no, no, no. Well, that is careless, the last two holes there with wedges. Needs to be dancing around about the flag, giving himself body opportunities, not struggling for par with that club in your hand. Oh, once again, we've got movement on the leaderboard. Simon Ward finds himself in top spot. Paul Howard in second, just a shot behind. And then a whole group of players on 11 under. Gary King, though, could be the man that sets a score in the clubhouse to test the rest. Now, talking of tests, here's a 60-second test of your Ryder Cup knowledge with John. Last 10 venues, Ryder Cup. Clock starts now, have it. Glen Eagles, Celtic Manor. The Belfry. Medina. Oakland Hill. 
Belfry. Valderrama. Belfry. I'm being like Carol Vorderman, no clues, man, no clues. Glen Eagles. Um, Valhalla. Glen Eagles. Um, Valhalla. Valderrama. Go for them again, just double check it. Am I getting next Valderrama one? there? K Club. Um, That's how good my knowledge is. <laughs> Can I say Celtic? No, Celtic. Um. 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 Ah, oh dear. Um. Come on, man. Oh, man. Um. What's going on? I don't know, I can't think. It's just gone mind blank. Um. Um. That's it. How many is that? Mate, that's only five, dude. Right, that's it. Stop the clock. Rory. Thanks, boss. Well, that was a staggering, staggering five pointer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven out of ten. Kev, in your face, son. Just beating you by two. Well, just a bit of fun, but an interesting test. And uh, as Morecambe and Wise used to say, most of them were there, not necessarily in the right order. The ones that weren't, though, the Country Club, Brookline, and Oak Hill in uh, Rochester. I wonder how many you guys got at home. We're keeping quiet here in the booth about how many we managed to nail. <laughs> Well, if there's anyone who's going to get all 10, it's got to be you in it. Andrew, come on, mate. Put you on the hot spot. Oh, that one's just gone in the trees over there on the <laughs> left-hand side. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, dear. Poor Simon Ward. <laughs> Not great uh, off the tee there from our leader. So, again, more interest for those in the hunting pack. Young needs to get himself sorted from that wedge sort of distance, but doesn't need to worry too much about that at this hole. But that, again, just a bit strong. As we come to Howard at the fifth, it's been a nice like, mid iron to long. Brings that bunker into play on the right hand side, though. Yeah, like, no chance of taking this one on with a driver. He's finding lovely level stance there for his second. Now, with a couple of days under your belt, Andrew, how tempting is it sometimes on the third round just to shift from a plan that you know has worked? Uh, yeah, very tempting. Certainly, if, if you're behind and you've got to push it, then you, you've got to take a, a lot of things on. And look at that fantastic shot from Shields right over the top of the flag. Oh, here we go. Here's some kamikaze magic needs to be done. Oh, I'm giving it a right old swipe. Straight up over the tree. Little jig out to the right-hand side to see where this baby's going to land. Oh. And look at this, feeding down onto the fringe of the green. What a shot from Ward. Beautiful. Love that stuff could do with just a little settler for a young nice little chipping putt from here over the back go on then that's amazing isn't it just in the space of a, a minute we've seen two very different shots required on this course and two very different results as well now Howard I love it when we see the golfers from the, the back looking to the green see what they're doing see the shape that they're putting on the ball and from Howard's point of view up and at it and again, just that little touch of check to bring it back to the hole. Yeah, he's not too happy with that one. I think he wanted to make that one dance around the flag. It wasn't meant to be. Still a little bit of work to be done. And Gavin's Gavin's on the right-hand side in the bunker. Yeah, playing alongside Paul Shields today. And they got off to a fabulous start, the pair of them. Birdie Mungus. Oh, and that's not far either. Far away. Birdie Mungus. Well, it's all... That's <laughs> a cracking <laughs> shot he's hit from there. <laughs> Yeah, Bertie Mungus. Is that a new word? So it, it could be, I'm afraid, John. We better be careful what we say today, because I tell you what, Coltart's on our case. Good boy. And Gareth. Putting in for Parmungus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Sorry, boys. Well, it's all getting very serious out there there's a few quite grim expressions as they make their way round but this man might be beaming come the end of his 18 oh. oh no 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 I spoke too early well that's a massive commentator's curse on our two-time winner this season Gary King yeah he, knew, he knows just a good strong finish he's got a chance of winning this that was just a little bit unfortunate there an error and he's not doing it he's not putting together the finish we know he's capable of well this would be an amazing birdie if this was to go in Get our gel free card. Has he got the legs? No, he hasn't. But that is a great effort. Really is. I'm sure he'd be knocking that one in for his part. Come on now, let's find the bottom of the cup. 
Let's get this round back on track. Well, it just isn't happening, is it? It seems to me like there's a little bit of confidence just disappeared from Young's game. Bit of a red mist coming over his eyes, I think. You know, a few holes back to back that he's just had problems with. If King's going to make it three wins, this has got to go in, you feel? Yeah, you'd say that's uh, a chance gone astray. Pin high the stick. Awkward stance, though, for his chip, but uh, nonetheless, not the execution he was looking for. Yeah, good call, though, Andrew. That is his chance evaporating, I think, right in front of our eyes. Now, Shields. This is big as well for Eagle. Take it. Awesome. What a great shot that was in there. Gets him to 12 under. Wow. I know Paul Laurie would very much like to see a Scotsman winning here in Aberdeen. And Shields certainly giving himself a chance, but here's an Englishman that might spoil the party. Oh, he he is going to be feeling this is not his day at the moment. Another one shaves the hole for young Paul Howard. And uh, a tap in has to settle for staying at 12 under with that part. But he's still very nicely placed at this tournament. He mustn't forget that. Simon Ward still leads, can't kick on any further than a single shot ahead of Shields and Howard in second position. And that Gary King finish that we were so looking forward to at the moment is not quite materialising. So Ward remains our leader here at Newmarket. Still to come, we hear from two players battling it out for the first prize here at Newmarket. And we give you, the viewers, the chance to get involved with the programme and our challenge John feature. And just lob it. Welcome back to Newmarket and the Paul Laurie Foundation Granite City Classic final round action and it's going to take a man of granite to win this one. At the moment our leader is the Irishman Simon Ward. Finds himself on 13 under a single shot ahead of those uh, chasing two Shields and Howard. Howard was the leader at the start of the day but has so far relinquished one shot back to the course. And Ward at the sixth with his tee shot. He's plotting his way around very nicely today. Now, talking of plotting their way around, here's John. Well, look at this for the final hole of the first nine holes. This is absolutely unbelievable. What a par three. Absolutely gorgeous. Loads of water. Break the water up really high on the right-hand side, getting really close to this green. Pin today tucked on the right-hand side. I mean, they are dangling the carrot, aren't they? Because it's only 161 yards, and you know, you feel like you've got a chance of making two on here, but with that pin there, you just think, well, hold on, do I go for it or not? Or do I just play left and play safe? But this is the trick of this beautiful hole. It really is. Lovely bunker on the left as well. Big bank, so you know, the gallery might be out there going crazy for you when you're coming up here. You know, especially if you go and shoot nine under like Young did on first day's play. You know, if he's coming to here, he's gonna have an eight iron in his hand. Pins back right, which means I've got to fade it, as we all know, not my favourite. But here we go, middle of the green, and hold it off. Great hole. Well, straight at it, boys, probably just an inch left, coming up just shy, little bit of chubby checker on it. No more than 12, 15 feet away from this hole. Good chances for a two. Great hole. John, I get the feeling you've fallen in love, mate. Yeah, I mean, this this ninth is a beaut. What do you think, Andrew? Yeah, I like the look of this. None of these 240-yard stupid par threes. This one, bit of trouble about, but it tempts you to go for the flagstick. Shields has done that right over the top of it. That's a good shot. Back to six. And our leader at the start of the day, Paul Howard. seeing quite a lot of different clubs being taken from the tees on the fours and fives and then on the threes whoa, whoa, they're, that they're that getting away with a few bits of luck here with uh, the bounces well, you don't want to hop forward then that was in big trouble but as we come to shields now this is down the slope now this for another move and he has made a few today oh, just wouldn't happen Green's rolling beautifully, John. 
the yeah, indeed is so true out there as you can see the locals just uh, probably picking their brains on who they think is going to win following this chap as well we'll see a local favorite filmed uh, quite a bit of golf up in scotland over time andrew uh, we'll just see how Chin take this shot and then i'll uh, make my point about some of the members watching this one out of position here but this man with tons of experience a sensible shot yeah known hutch for years very very steady player yes the guys in the gallery watching on as ward lines uh, this birdie up what is it about scotland and in particular as you move further north the speed at which the members play hit and run <laughs> I feel that is a bit of a loaded question. <laughs> we get around the golf course quicker because it tends to be a little bit cooler or something like that. So could, we... could be, could be. But uh, these boys know how to do it. And they'll be making a few comments during the course of this final round as well. Just letting the pros know how to play their course. Yeah, the fabulous 17th for Birdie and not to be for King. Hasn't happened, has it? No, it hasn't. It's a fantastic round. It's put together, there's no doubt about that. But just had to keep it going. And just that little stumble there at 16, unfortunately, could have been a completely different story. And how we're putting through the fringe. Never easy. Oh, not to be. Just coming up shy. Unfortunately for him, that's what happens when you come through the fringe. So still trails by one. I wonder how much further around this final round he's going to go before that starts to gnaw away at him. Now right for par, chipped it to here. Sounds like a Hercules is overhead. Ooh. Well, short game, short game once again. Causing a few problems today. Now Ward, quite as straightforward as it looks. This to stay in the lead at 13 under. Just overread it a touch. Well, I think that was a little bit more than overread it. That was a little shove, I think. Now, is that a sign of a few nerves creeping in? Potentially could be. Somebody that knows what it's like. Up at the top of the leaderboard. Can he convert this chance fast down there, dead centre? Great putt, great up and down, Greg. It was indeed, and Hutch is in business joins three others at the top of the leaderboard on 12 under and we couldn't resist a chat with him before the tournament well greg hutchins has been able to join me here at the back of the 18th hole absolutely glorious isn't it greg eh? it's nice to have you man it's very nice uh the sun is almost breaking out which is a little bit unusual for aberdeen at the moment but it's uh yeah, it's good. You know, this year a pro here at Newmark, I mean, this course is absolutely in top-notch condition. I mean, the boys are loving it. I mean, you get to play this now and again, and obviously, you know Paul really well. Yeah, um, I think Paul thought quite hard about where he was going to take the tournament, um, and I think this is a good venue. I think the guys are enjoying it. The course is in great condition. Paul and Marion do a huge amount of work with the Paul Laurie Foundation. Uh, not just supporting young golfers, but they support young athletes in various types of sports. They put in a huge amount of work. Um, and of course, famously here, Paul, after he won the British Open in 1999, he, uh, there was quite a number of the members were obviously in the clubhouse celebrating. And of course, Paul famously walked in with the trophy. How unbelievable so, is that? Yeah, I think, I think That's like was, a dreamy scenario, isn't yeah, it? That's so good. obviously his, his picture's on the wall and uh, it's one of the sort of legendary moments in the club's history, you know. Thank you very much, bud. Nice to see you, It's John. really nice to see you. Brings back good memories. <laughs> Great stuff. Well, it's laid back and it's horizontal, eh, John? Uh, it is indeed. I mean, this boy, though, I mean, he's winning the Tartan Tour every year, it seems like. This guy seriously knows how to play. Very methodical player, and look at that. Safety. Just away from the water. Decent chance for his birdie now. Ward testing himself again. Yeah, that's a tricky one. Laying the club face way open, ball below his feet. Oh, didn't seem to get the contact he wanted. Oh, that's a fortunate break. Oh, that's come off pretty good. As he come to Paul Shields. What a first nine holes that is. Nice juicy four under par, opening it up. 
and starts the back line with a lovely birdie as well. Good things to come from the Scotsman, I'm sure. A well, couple of pulls doing pretty well on the course so far. Here's another one, Paul Howard. But talking of Paul Laurie, that lovely story of him coming to the clubhouse with the trophy after he won at Carnoustie back in 1999. But he's gone on, hasn't he, Andrew, to work on this whole foundation and this whole idea of bringing golf into Scotland and developing all this young talent. He's doing a phenomenal job. Yeah, he's, he doesn't get the credit uh, that he deserves, actually. And, and great that Greg mentions Marion as well, because she also works tirelessly uh, at it. They, uh, they're a fantastic couple, put in a tremendous amount of time and effort, you know, almost to the point of, of sacrificing his own career in, in the main tour. I know he works incredibly hard at his own golf, and yet in weeks off, he's always doing other things for young golfers to give people this opportunity to, to play this great game that we all enjoy. Yeah, hats off to Paul Laurie and to Marion. They really have done a great job and uh, I think the fruits of their labour now are starting to really ripen. We're seeing some fabulous talent coming through from this part of the world. As we see War, can he get it? No, he can't. That would have been a definite Barry bonus if that would have gone in from an awkward position. But not to be as he taps it in. Forward to the 18th and Gary King. It's been a good round of golf, but he hasn't quite found the shots he was looking for in the closing stretch. So this is a must. Birdie for 12 under. Not to be, I'm afraid. Small margins, isn't it? You know, there's just three in the last three there that could just have been so different. They could have, Andrew, without question. And Gary, though, just love chucking in those little numbers. Young, unfortunately, chucked in the biggest loan number of the week, nine under on first day's play, but today's a different matter. It's not going his way at the moment. Eagle he chance slides by. Yeah, he cruises that one down the hole. Uh, that tapped in for a birdie. Might be a good thing of things to come, you never know. Back to double figures under the card then for a rather disconsolate looking Mark Young. All smiles for him at the start of the day. King then to finish his round and get into the clubhouse at 11 under, but he'll know it's not going to be quite enough, I feel, today. Yeah, this boy, the moneymaker, look at that. That's solid as a rock, but like you said, Andrew, just went a bit flat on his last six holes and just didn't, you know, he had the birdies flying, but just uh, dried up on him on the closing stages. So confirmation that Paul Shields, the Scotsman, is leading here at Newmarket. 13 under, ahead of Gavins, Hutchin and Howard. King is in the clubhouse with that fabulous 65 at 11 under. Now Laura Woods caught up with Alistair McGregor, the operations director here at Newmarket Golf Club. Alistair, it's such a beautiful course and I know the players have really enjoyed playing on it so far this week. How proud are you of to keep the standards so high? Well, we are used to very high standards here, but it is a, a great fill-up for the, the guys to hear all these great comments about the course. They have worked very hard for this event. We've known for a while it was coming. The guys have concentrated. They work hard all the time, but specifically so for this event, and it's great to see it come to its full potential at this time. This course, Hawks Hill, has been described as the thinking man's course. Just tell us why. It's probably because, by championship standards, it's not as long as some of the courses nowadays and it is all about getting into position off the tee so that you can attack these pins, which a lot of them are guarded by water. There's a lot of trees round about, so it's imperative that you have, are in position off the tee. It's been a long time since we had an event of this size, and it's the sort of thing that we always strive for. A lot of clubs in the area, there are a lot of big events in this area, but it's lovely to see Newmacher on the map as well, and uh, we're absolutely delighted to be hosting the Europro Tour this week. Still to come, we catch up with Paul Howard, one of three players trying to chase down the leader, Paul Shields. And there's more magic from Johnny e. Morgan as he talks us around the last few holes. Well, I've overdone the shape, but it's definitely safe. And now I've got a decent chance of a birdie. Welcome back to final round action from the Paul Laurie Foundation Granite City Classic here at Newmaca in Aberdeen. There's your leader at the moment, Paul Shields, putting together a very good round. 13 under, but he's got company. Gavins, Hutchin and Howard 
on 12 under are in the hunt and there's plenty not far back on 11 under as well. We could be heading for a really good finish here. Now, winner in uh, South America, winner of the uh, Finnish Am and winner of the US Am as well, Paul Howard. Had some fabulous results in his time, has, has bided his time as well, turning pro as he heads towards his mid-twenties. And rather like this young man, Daniel Gavins, should be successful. Well, Gavins, great player. Coming back to the Euro Pro, it's lovely to see him. He asks a lot of himself though, Daniel. Ball, a little upslope, a little launch pad here, slightly above his feet. Nice crisp strike. Got the old Sergio Divic going with the old wood there, uh, Andrew. And what a shot that is. Oh, oh. That is what you call an absolute perler. Oh, that could be a round changer, a tournament changer for Paul Howard. But they fought back down the green for Shields. A 30 footer at least. It's giving that one a wrap. Is it going to get there? Oh, it's a cool. beautiful try. That was a great effort. Coming up just shy though. But you take it from such a long way away. Tap in then to stay at 13 under. <laughs> <laughs> He's enjoyed himself now. Here we go. Hutch through his normal routine. A few little waggles. And then pulls the trigger. Punches it out there. Oh, and just getting his clubbing wrong. He'd be kicking himself there. It's not the normal Hutch style. Travails continue for Young. Knew that one wasn't on the right line from the moment he struck it, unfortunately. He looks a little bit disheartened now, Andrew. I feel you know, the shoulders are just like a little bit too relaxed. Funny the way it works, though, sometimes, isn't it? You drop down a little bit, all the pressure disappears, you start to play again. Yeah, you can. You just got to try and learn from it. Here's Hutch, can he get down and a chip and a putt from over the back? Good to see him take that back flag on. Beautiful. Look at that. Simple Simon. Meta Pyman. Good old Hutch. All right, don't start, Marking John. It. Whole side. <laughs> Beautiful chip. Now, Howard for an eagle. Now, this will put a cat amongst the pigeons. See if he can get this baby straight up the hill. Can be positive with this. Beautiful shot in. Leaving himself with this one up the hill. Has he got it? He has. Oh. What an eagle. Oh, Mr. Howard. Absolute beauty. We got a new leader. Howard moves back into the lead at 14 under. And no surprise, this young man's doing well. Lovely angles to his goal swing. Beautiful takeaway. Lovely position at the top. A lot of coil in there. Wonderful position at impact. Lovely extension through the ball and perfect balance. Yes, he's a fantastic player. And no surprise that the Lancashire man turned pro after that superb amateur career of his. Golfing idol, Angel Cabrera. Holds him one, just the four at the moment. And John Morgan caught up with him after the second round. Well, Paul Howard's joined us, clubhouse leader after the second day. Absolutely unbelievable scores, man. 13 under par, Paul. Thanks a lot. I mean, what kind of went on out there? I mean, it's uh, a tough track, isn't it? Um, not to me today, no. <laughs> Lots of birdies, not many bogeys. One bogey in 36. So I pretty made up with that. Um, what about strength of the game? Where is it lying at the moment? Um, a pretty solid tee to green, hitting it very close. I haven't really held it, not much putts, really, but I've hit it very close the last two days. Good man, Paul. And give us an insight, man. I mean, you're past and now you're present, you know. What have you done um, in the, the past years? Um, well, I've played for England the last two years, which has been great, and then I turned pro in February. Um, my first event was Challenge Tour in Kenya, which was a good, wow. good start. And then I've been played a few Challenge Tour and I played my first Euro Pro at Burr Hill uh, a few weeks ago, which went all right. Good man, good man. And what's uh, for the future? Say you were able to go one step further and lift the trophy here this week, what would you do? Um, have a good night out, maybe. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> and then hopefully qualify for the Open next week cool. and just see how it goes the rest of the season. Sounds like it could be a dream start. I okay. wish you all the best, though, Paul. Thanks, John. Keep it up, mate. Cheers. Good boy. Yeah, good lad, Paul Howard, towering over John there. What, what's Paul, about six feet? 
Yeah, but well, I believe he's about six foot four. But a little bit surprised I didn't supply you with a box here, Johnny Morgan. I did ask for one. He just wanted to make me feel small for a little while. Ah, oh, John, giving him a hard time, but. Uh, Who's going to be able to give everybody else a hard time in this final round? We're, we're thinking maybe this man, Greg Hutchin. I might put my money on this man. Hell of a player. Lots of experience, like Andrew was saying. Been around for donkeys. Yeah, certainly knows how to win, no doubt about that. A tee shot at the ninth pin in the front, water lurking. Yeah, Simon Ward. Very strong challenge today, has had the lead at one point, but has slipped back to 11 under, and this is a brave shot. He's taken it on, and that's okay. Now let's head to the 12th with John. Par four, 428 yards, and it's dead straight, but so tight, 13 yards, bang in the middle of this fairway. Bang in, obviously, the hitting range of where driver goes, and I've just pulled it left as i do i'm a bit of a right to left off the tee and i've clattered into the trees come to rest here and now i'm left with this i mean down through the trees i mean i've got a gap through here but i ain't going to do that my strength is a right to lefter so i'm going to aim to the right flirt with the bunker on the right hand side which means i've got to miss it just to the left and scull it up on the green but you've got this gap way up there and i'm sure tiger woods would fancy his luck at going that route and try and land it on the green softly which i might try in a minute but first of all here we go seven iron Going to close the face down, wrap them hands over, and get this thing bending around this tree. Here we go. And I tell you what, I think I overcooked it. Now that is what you call a snapper roo. But beautiful hole this 12. Absolutely love it. Well, right on cue. Daniel Gavin's John looks like he's got to fashion something similar. Yeah, it does. It does. But he's having to go through them. With a fade, he's the other side of the fairway. And what a shot that is. Nearly pitched straight in the hole. Still some work to do then for Gavins. Now, Paul Howard. I think he's done very well to hold his patience on this front nine, and he's eventually got his reward to go to 14 under. Interesting choice of shot. Hands a little bit ahead of the ball. Just punching it down there, beautiful line. Well, great execution there. He knew what he was doing, that's a lovely shot. Certainly looks the part, does Howard? Yeah, Shields now in the middle of the fairway, lofty club in hand. Hoo -hoo, look at that baby. I'm sure that would be a tap-in for a birdie for Mr Shields. Very well executed. It's all starting to warm up again. Uh, the doldrums about the midway phase, but we're seeing some beautiful golf now. Hit it, Greg. Well, you heard them say it. Is it going to catch the hole? You did hit it, Greg. Oh, maybe a little bit firmer would have held its line. That's unfortunate. Just left it hanging over the edge. How is it not dropped? Well, gave it the full time just in case. But in the end, had to tap it in. Strong challenge from Shields and Hutchin in terms of getting a home winner here at Newmaka. Sending them on down there and blocking it out to the right. Just up very quick out of that one, Andrew. Yeah, it seemed to be a little bit of a figure of eight in the backstroke. Ward. Not happy. Always tricky coming through the fringe, just bobbled it offline ever so slightly. Well, I can tell you he went on to get his par, did Simon Ward at nine. After 12 though for birdie. This would be brilliant if he can knock this one in, which he does. Easily done. Great birdie. And now joint leader at 14 under, Mr. Shields. Well, once again, this leaderboard changes, Shields uh, joins Howard at the top. But for the first time in our final round, we've got a bit of distance between the nearest chaser, Greg Hutchian, two shot lead for those two ahead of him. And King still in that clubhouse at 11 under. But that score now being surpassed as we suspected it would. But how much further can they go? How does the, the back nine compare to the front nine, John? They're both as good as one another, they really are. There's chances and there's evil places as well that you don't want to, you've got to play sensible on. 
and uh, you know it's just if you got your wits about you and you're just going to play some good sensible golf you know as we've seen now the rain is coming down in stair rods which is going to cause havoc for the players yeah it's going to make things a little bit harder just that moisture between the club face and ball it's slightly trickier to control distances some delay reaction there on the green by Paul Howard. A lot of spin. Coming up well short as we see, come to Greg now at 12. Perfect position, slight upslope. A slight upslope, just a little bit of a slope behind the ball that he could use to try and spin it back to the hole. Uh, good skills. Yeah, that's a sublime shot by Greg. Shields a great look to this course the leading inland Scottish courses. This one's coming up the ledge though, Simon. This is up the ledge, leveling and out. Oh, not a bad putt. He's definitely reading, getting the read of the greens very well. Pace is perfect. Saw Daniel Gavin's jump into position pretty quick there. See the end of that putt. Yeah, just trying to get a read off his playing partner. Now, this is just all about the pace for Howard. He's judged it perfectly. Yeah, he is dialed beauty. in. He really yeah. is. I do like the way this young man is playing now. And I do like the way he dealt with the start to his round. There were some frustrating moments. He saw his lead evaporate. But he stayed calm and he started playing some great golf. Now then, this for par for Hutchin. Yeah, found trouble off the tee. Blocked out into the middle of the fairway. Oh, and just unfortunately, that's back-to-back -back putts. We've seen him just so close, but not going in for him. He'll take it on the chin, like he always does. I'm sure he'll stay very cool and calm out there, as this man has done. Darren Wright, uh, winner a couple of weeks ago, the man from golf at uh, Goodwood. Fabulous car to take him to 10 under and put himself in the mix. And this man, Marcus Armitage, winner last week at Cumberwell Park. He's with John, and he had a go at the 60-second challenge. Well, last week's champion, Marcus Armitage, Cumberwell Park winner. How you doing, man? Yeah, Must I'm be chuffed good. to bits. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, thank you. Yeah. So, come on, man. Just a dirt. What was it like? Yeah, it was good. I mean, you know, I played well there the year before. I uh, just didn't have a great last round, level par last round. But so going in, you know, I saw my coach a week before after f four weeks on the road. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I got a bit more on track. Well, it looked like you were swinging it good on the range, but you were just telling me different. It wasn't quite feeling right. Well, no, uh, it, it was all right. It was good. But um, then when it got under the pressure a bit, it started, you know, a bit yeah. educated hands had to come in. Good. Well, yeah. then you got good hands, and that's a good saviour, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Well, we have a fantasy 18, you know, and every winner's got to pick a hole. I mean, so Cumberwell Park, what was the favourite hole, mate? I'm going to say par 4, 15. Oh, the, the, the dog little dog right. leg left to yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, narrow green to come into. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it used to be a par five. Uh, it's That's right. It's a par four, and it's uh, it's a tough hole. It's a tough tee shot, and uh, it's just a real good hole. Ah, good man. Right then, there you go. Fifteenth hole, Commonwealth Park. Anyway, to boot, we got this little quiz going on. Right, bit of trivia for you. Now, it's on the clock. This is okay. Right. It's on the clock. Now I'm going for. I reckon if you beat six, you're champion. All right. All right. I'll give you a fiver. <laughs> right. The last ten Ryder Cup venues. Go. Oh, Damn. look at oh, that. Medina. Medina. Um, oh, God. Celtic Manor. K Club. Um, Glen Eagles. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm Belfry. Yeah, no, good yeah. boy. Good boy. Uh, they're all European. I know that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Go on, I'm, dude. I'm done. You're I'm done. done. Yeah. All right, I mean, well, that's five scored, bud. Yeah. Five scored. I mean, you, you know, there's someone else there with seven. Well, unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, we had like the likes of Oak Hills. Do you remember Oak Hills? Yeah, Valhalla. Yeah, Valhalla. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, just not meant I'm to be. Try to get a quick sneak on me. Yeah, I know, <laughs> mate. I wasn't going to give it, give it away, but well, mate, all I can say is go out there, have a great day today, and keep the uh, keep the buzz going, eh? Well, he didn't win the Ryder Cup quiz, but he certainly won last week at Cumberwell Park. Great effort from Marcus Armitage, but this week it's up to Howard and Shields at the moment. They are leaders at 14 under. More to come from Newmarket after the break.
Welcome back. Before we get back out onto the course, it's time for you guys at home to interact with our resident pro, John E. Morgan, in our Challenge John feature. Well, Phil from Ipswich has just come in and tweeted and said, look, I want to challenge John Morgan. Can he play the shot? Well, I'm going to give it a go, boys and girls. And Phil, this is for you, my friend. This is what you call over your shoulder lob shot to a green that's, well, a pin that's 20 yards the other side. Now, if I was there looking at it, I think, well, I got no shot. But the only way to do it really is just put your shoulder facing a target, get yourself lying the same way and just lob it. And it's on the green, about 30 foot away, but that's how you do it. A few more takes, I'll probably get it closer, but I only get one go. Thank you, Phil. Open it up, very lofty club. <laughs> Lisa got over the bunker, didn't it? Lisa got. Is that all right, Phil? Hope it was, mate. Cheers, bud. Oh, the magic of TV. We're giving John a bit of stick this week, but if you want to get in touch with him and challenge him on the programme, then please do so. We'd love to hear from you. Now, back to the action in the Paul Laurie Foundation Granite City Classic here at Newmarket. And it's very tight at the top of the leaderboard. And a man that we haven't seen much of in this final round, Matten, moved himself to nine under. Ooh, nice. It's quick, brisk swing. Oh, and dissects the flag. Hits it square on. Goes to a foot. What a shot. Paul Howard started the day as leader at 13 under, has stayed very calm, very patient, and Andrew is starting to look the part, isn't he, out there? Mm, certainly is. Just coming from the light rough there, but as you can see, not posing any problems. That's a good chance there for a buddy. And here's the man alongside him at the top of the tree. Joint leader, Paul Shields. Yeah, slightly coming down the slope here. It's going to be a little bit rapid. Has it got the legs? Oh. It does. What a butt. Why like Paul Shields, leader on his own, moves himself to 15 under. And I think just starting to look a little bit tense about it. Maybe just that thought process of winning a tournament starting to dawn on the young man. Out of position again here for Greg Hutchin. Cleverly done, just needed a little bit more. Tricky little putt for a par save left. Yes, he and Ward providing us with our Seve-esque moments in this final round. As we come to Howard now, can he get it? No, it's not going to move. He thought it was. That's a little misread there by Paul. Well, he said it's in his interview, didn't he, Johnny? He wasn't holding a lot at the moment. Yeah, he's just hitting the ball absolutely fantastic. But, I mean, if he was holding a lot, my goodness. Be enjoyable to watch. No, momentum. These are so important to every player. Oh, I just snuck by as well. Oh, look at that. Yeah, frustrating, Greg. This is a couple. They just let slip away, unfortunately. Yeah, we've seen him miss quite a few putts. And I mean, if those went the other way, 50% of them went in. Cool. Be right at the top of the leaderboard. But Matt, and after what was an amazing approach into this green. Polishes it off, gets into double figures. Yes, gets his just desserts. Well played, Sam Matten, and well played, Darren Wright. Yeah, look at that, just the one bogey, six birdies on his card. Back to back there at 16 and 17. He just won in Burr Hill recently. And we'll see if he can get past Gary King in the clubhouse, who's on 11 under. He's got a chance to do so. Now, Howard. His lead has gone again. Single shot behind Paul Shields now. He is striking the ball beautifully. Yeah, another beautiful shot there. Absolutely correct. Now let's take a look at the 14th with John. As you can see, the birdies are outweighing the bogeys on this one, so the boys are taking advantage of it. Bunkers come into play on this right-hand side, as you can see, and it opens up if you come down the right, opens up, miss this tree. That's on the left, takes it out of play, so you get a good bird's eye view coming into this green. And what a green it is. Kind of sits up a little bit and swells off left, right and centre. Absolute beautiful par four. And playing over the card this week as well. 
Well, I think the, the toughest test here at Newmarket for the winner is going to be picking our fantasy hole for this week. There's so many to choose from. No, Hutchin needing to put the hammer down. Oh, another nice little break. Well, tricky shot. Ball going to be below his feet there. It is. And Howard for birdie after a great approach. Can he do it? No, another putt goes astray for the young lad. First sign of frustration we've seen from him as well. Well, you do get frustrated, don't you, Andrew? I mean, if it's just, you know, time and time again, you've got yourself chances and you don't hold them, yeah, you're pulling uh, pulling your air out. Somebody that's very frustrated. Look at that educated hands we had earlier on. Very difficult with a lofted club getting to the bottom of that. Well, he's missed another green, but he could chip that one in, Greg. I mean, talk about pulling your air out. We don't have much air to pull out, do we, Andrew? <laughs> well, we've both had plenty of experience of that, John, haven't we? <laughs> That's for sure. Now, Young has seen his round and his oh. challenge deteriorate here at Newmarket, but that uh, might just lift the spirits. He's not out of it, you know. Well, this is interesting by Greg. I mean, he's so close to the flag, he's opting to put this. He's coming through two cuts before the green. Oh, and oh. it's worked. <laughs> what a putt by Greg. What a putt indeed. And it means he's still in business with that whole cluster of players tied third on 11 under, but still at the top of the tree. Paul Howard and the man leading by one shot. Paul Shields managing to part the 15th to keep himself in top position here at the Paul Laurie Foundation Granite City Classic. Now let's head up to the air and take a look at the 15th with Andrew Coulthard. Yeah, 208. It's playing today, not a lot of breeze to speak of. And a deep U-shaped bunker in the front. The front a part of that really shouldn't be coming into play. And over on the right-hand side, just there's a couple of little knuckles that the players can maybe use to try and feed the ball in off of. It's a tough par three. Tough par three indeed. Let's look at it from the ground. Well, here at the beautiful 15th, par three, 210 yards. I mean, absolute beauty. Only for the reason being, the green is actually a small target for such a long par three. You know, it's got two little humps at the back of the green. Not much to do with them, really. But then you've got this big U-shaped bunker just guarding the left portion of it and just shy of this green. And it's just an absolute beauty. I mean, gives you a lovely little avenue to look down as well as you look at this green. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, and it's everything you've got in the bag when it comes to irons. I mean, I've got a four iron and I need to fly this one really high because the green is slightly raised only by a couple of feet, but still raised. That means I've got to come in high and land it soft, which isn't an easy thing to do, especially if the wind and the rain gets out and it's really hard to play. But today it's lovely and calm. So every chance. Now, they put the tees up forward. I've got 200 yards to go. I'm looking at just inside right edge of the green. With my natural draw, it should be fine and dandy. Let's give it a go. Just got to miss that bunker. It's drawing on me, probably to where final day's pin position is. Can actually see it finish, but I know it's probably in trouble. Let's go and have a look. Well, I didn't quite get it right, did I? Just slightly dragged it to the left-hand side and just caught the edge of this bunker. You can see my pitch mark right there. It's just fed down into the bunker here. And it is just humongous. I mean, it's very hard to miss this one. Big U-shape, guarding a very small green. And it is beautiful. This pin today just tucked in a little bowl, you know, where the boys, if they're hitting a great shot, might be able to feed into it and give them a chance, well, maybe of a hole in one. But not for me today, unfortunately. I'm in here, tough shot ahead. Got the lob wedge out, need some loft, need to land it nice and soft on that green and hopefully get away with a par. Bit of late spin, just up on the bank. Not going to quite come back on me, but I got a little knee trembler from about eight feet to save me par. What a beautiful hole. Well, you just keep saying it, don't you, all the way around this course. Yeah, it's easier to say as well. Every hole is majestic. It really is. A credit to the greenkeepers and all the staff as we see Greg coming down the yeah, hole and holds yeah. another one. Get in there, Greggy boy. What a two on what a great par three, like I said. He's draining them for fun at the moment, is Hutch. Now Shields, our leader by just a single shot. Now par five, but looking to take advantage of this one. 
Just a little bit out to the right. And you can see probably why. A little bit closed on the way back. Flattens it off nicely at the top, though, but the damage is done. Just gets ahead of it. And just squirts it out to the right, resulting in being in that bunker by the looks of it. That's the mechanics of what happened. Will it be problems for him in terms of this tournament? Because Howard is still in the hunt. Just the same swing every single shot. Pretty relentless. Just a little bit undercooked there, just in the lower tier. Looks a common place to be, that one, Andrew. Seen a lot of putts from down there on that right hand side as we come to Gavin's. Oh, this is a little low fizzer. This has got some late spin on it. Oh, there it is. You could tell that just by the strike and how low it came out. A few hops and a big stop. Anyway, Howard up the slope, little rise, levels out. Still won't drop, but that was a, a good putt. And the applause from the gallery confirming so. But things still might change, bearing in mind that the leader Shields has got some work to do. And here he is at 16. Well, not bad, just a little bit. Spin there that he didn't want. Tricky little putt left. Young to make amends after his early doors mistakes. Starting a fight back with some birdies. And another towering great iron shot coming in to no more than eight feet away. And that's another chance for Mr. Young. I'd imagine Shields will be looking intently at this one. Yeah, he zoomed straight in behind Daniel there just to see how that broke. It's only slightly off the right hand side, but a great birdie nonetheless for Daniel Gavins. Now Young to get on the birdie train. Come on, that's better. Well done. Well done. Well, certainly put in a bit of a nice finish. Yeah, moves himself to 11 under. I think that pressure's gone now. He can just play and see what he can get to. Now Shields needs this. Gets it. Good, solid golf from Paul Shields. Good solid goal from this man. In the end, a decent finish for Darren Wright. Three birdies in a row for a round of 66 and into the clubhouse as the new leader at 12 under. Right, let's go ahead to the 17th with Andrew. Yeah, Darren Wright managed to build it, but 431 yards. It's a tough par four at the end of the round. There's jungle all the way over on the left-hand side. Got ahead a little fade off that bunker down the left. A little bit of trouble lurking for the miscue with the second shot. Big pond just short right, bunker over there guarding, and green shape like a figure eight, and a mound over on the left hand side that'll throw the ball back onto the green. There's plenty to consider. And Shields is the man that will take it on, our leader. Out of position off the tee. There's his third shot in there, just through in the fringe. Oh, he's struggling. Yes, I think we might be seeing a change and it'll be happening pretty soon. Shields leading by a single shot, but if Howard can get it right here at 14, he could be back in business. Well, Howard out with a three wood. Munching this ball, hopefully for position A off the tee if he can. Ooh, and it's looked down the right hand side. Sam Matten. Gave us a bit of drama earlier today when he hit the flag. Yeah, nice little upslope pin over there on the right-hand side. Is he taking this one on or is he aiming for the middle of the green? I think he's taking it on. Oh, I did take it on. Just a little bit unlucky. He didn't get a hop forward. Half a club short there, Andrew. Now, tops off for Paul. He's going to make him swing freely here. Straight up in the air. Get some height on it. Land it on this green nice and soft if you can. Oh, I just pulled it a fraction. That's going to be a little little tricky one, but they also can be your routine babies if you're on form. Huge putt for Shields. Penultimate hole. Can I find the bottom of the cup? Get to the hole. Oh, it's a great try. Oh. Oh, that's defied gravity. Well, a foot out. You'd have said guaranteed. Just slid by, and that's the shot dropped. 
Yeah, and that could, well, you never know, could prove costly. They're the ones that make you win tournaments. I'll help you win them. We're coming to Matten up the slope. Good touch, not the drop though. Needed that one to drop. Yeah, that was free goal. I can tell you that he went on to get birdie to go to 11 under. So back to Paul Howard with this little tester. Yeah, I played a lovely little chip from over the back of the ninth in similar circumstances. Was it hands ahead of the ball, just nudging it forward. How's it done? Oh, needed a bit more. It's a good line. Might not be able to capitalise. Now, Greg. For birdie, across the green. He hasn't hold much. He's had a few in recent holes. Can he get another one, though? Oh, not meant to be. Well, one thing's for sure, he's been entertaining. Been fabulous fun watching him go round today. Yeah, I'm an Anorian. What could have been? I think he's going through his head, Greg. Now Howard, routine up and down. This for par. And does it easily. Yeah, he's, I think he fancied that chip. And in the end, having to settle for a share of the lead once again with Paul Shields at 14 under, Darren Wright into the clubhouse. He's our clubhouse leader at 12 under, but still more excitement to come, I'm sure. Now then, time to catch up with one of the men behind this tournament, Michael McDougall of the Paul Laurie Foundation. The foundation uh, essentially is a, a grassroots, or, uh, an organisation for grassroots golf. So, but we run right through under 18s, under uh, 15s, 10s, and 12s as our kind of primary target audience. But we, we also support a number of professionals in the field this week. So, taking them right through developing young pros to play on higher level tours. For us, obviously, we are trying to develop guys into being uh, winning tour professionals and I think that's what a tour like uh, the Europro is able to do. It's uh, high level competition, there's some incredible competitors out here so the, at the very top level these guys will uh, hopefully go on to be uh, future challenge tour and tour professionals at the highest level and following the footsteps of a major champion, Paul Laurie. Still head to head as we move into the business end of the tournament, Howard versus Shields, the conclusion after the break. Welcome back to the concluding action from the Paul Laurie Foundation Granite City Classic here at Newmarket in Aberdeen. The 18th looms large. Let's take a look at it with Andrew Coulter. Playing just under its par of four. Shortish one to finish with, just 360 yards. This bunker down the right-hand side shouldn't really come into play for the players today. Second shot uphill. Well bunkered, two deep ones at the front. One again on the right-hand side. And it's a little bit of a bowl-shaped green to finish with here on 18. Well, it's Paul's tournament, and we've got a pair of Pauls leading at the moment. This is one of them, Paul Shields, joint leader with Paul Howard on 14 under. Just a coincidence, I'm sure. Confirmation of those scores with Darren Wright in the clubhouse at 12 under, but don't think that's going to be enough today. Another good performance from him, though, and that's a solid tee shot. As Andrew was saying, taking the bunker out of play, taking it over it. And Paul Howard on 15. One of the toughest holes coming down the stretch. Definitely long par three, towering shot. Oh, flirted with the bunker. Come up shy of the first knuckle that's on the right hand side of this green, and that's going to be an awkward putt from there. Now uphill always plays a little bit longer. Didn't Shields get the distance right? Only a sand dial. Yeah, it looked like he was a little bit disgusted with it, but that is actually a beautiful shot. That's left in quite a simple putt. Not a lot of break in that one. Let's entertain the gallery. And we said about break. Now this has got a lot of it. Up, over the slope, down, coming back a little bit. This could be the crunch. Ooh, not meant to be. That was a great effort, though. Fraction short. And Paul Howard once again stares down the hole. If they dropped today, this man would have been away and clear. 
And it's still not over yet. The likes of Daniel Gavins might see something happen, but he's got to get something out of this final hole. If he could haul that, he'd tie for the lead. Oh, beautiful effort. Really good attempt from Gavins. Yeah, dancing around the hole. Now, Greg coming down the slope. We've seen Paul Shields so close to holding this kind of putt from off the green, though. And Greg could do with this one. Is it going to take the break coming back? No, it doesn't. Stays out there. So many near misses for the man. Yes, really needed a birdie, birdie finish, did Hutch. Well, this is it. Not a lot of breaking it. Uphill. Can be firm with it. No, left it out there. And I'm afraid, from Paul Shields' point of view, he knows that that's going to be a rather uncomfortable weight back in the clubhouse at 14 under. Yeah, and I mean, a 66 final day is no mean feat. That's a great score, but that bogey on 17 proving, well, I think will prove very, very costly. As we see Gavin's now just tapping that in for a very easy birdie, which gets him to 13 under par. And look at that. Loads of birdies, that one little blip. Yes, Mr. Consistent. Daniel Gavins is at it again and starting to look very good. Now, what lies ahead for Paul Howard, Andrew, at the 16th? Yeah, 524 yards this plays. Bunker over there down the left-hand side of Howard can just aim at the right edge, maybe with a little fade. Now, well, Bunker green through an avenue of trees. This one just well short, surely wouldn't be coming into play, but we've seen the players take on the pin, which is over on the right-hand side, and find that bunker. It's a bit of a sloping green. A chance for Howard to get one hand on the trophy. Yeah, so what we do know is that this man, if he can make a shot on the final three holes and not give anything back, then it could be his win. Surely just middle of the green, give himself two putts. Oh, he's going right at it again. Yeah, that is uh, a very confident swing, confident man taking it on as we come to Hutch. Down the last hole. Out with the three wood for positioning. Take out this bunker out of play. Oh, just overshot it. Nearly in the real thick, gooey stuff on the left hand side, which is not a place you want to be. Quite a slow putt up this green. And you don't want to believe in yourself, ones like that. No, a little bit nervy, that one, I think, Andrew. And Greg, lobbing this one up. Bunker that short left of this green, take it over it, maybe probably release all the way up the green to the hole, or fly it all the way and stop it dead. And he's done that, and what a great shot that is. I've said he's been entertaining today. It's another fabulous effort from Greg Hutchin. Back to 16, and Ward has had a share of the lead today, but has dropped back to 10 under, but Eagle would put him right back in it. Not to be, I'm afraid. So tap him for his birdie. And that moves him to 11 under. There'll be a lot of players at the end of today walking away from this tournament and thinking, I could have had that. Now, yeah, Sam Matter. Yeah, final hole for Sam. Is for Birdie. This would be a nice confidence booster. Be a great tournament if he can knock this one in. It's a good tournament anyway. Oh, just missing on the right hand side. And he'll probably knock that one in. It'll keep him in double figures. Good tournament all round for Sam. As you can see, very solid round of golf. That one blitz, just like Daniel Gavin's coming at the 12th hole. 69, very solid swinger of the ball. He'd be proud of his performance this week, I'm sure. Now this to set things up a bit for Paul Howard and give him a bit of protection coming down the last two. He's got it. Yeah, nicely done, good confident stroke and rewarded for his patience. Now this one, little trembler, just on the inside the left half of the hole and send it on its way. And that's nicely done by Greg. Good tournament all round. Probably wooing the old missed putts early doors. 
Yeah, that was a great performance. Just unfortunately, those little hiccups there in 12 and 13, but a nice strong finish and a wonderful tournament for Greg Hutchin. Closing stages of this beautiful golf course. This is 17, 431 yards. Par four on the card is stroke index four, which means it's absolutely hard as you like. Now, as I look down this fairway, it's a slight dog leg from left to right. Loads of trees on that right hand side. Beautiful, lovely, deep bunker on the left. Some of the guys might think, well, do I play safe? You know, do I not get the drive right? Do I hit the long iron? That's going to leave you a monstrous second to a very, very hard green. Now, driver out, you've got to be very thorough. You've got to aim just inside the trap on the left hand side with a fade. Not my speciality, but if you've got to do it, do it. So here we go, bit of a Mickelson style, feet outside the tee box, trying to give myself maximum leverage into this fairway, which I need. So we've got a matey Karen man out there. I'm going to aim it straight at him. Hopefully I don't hit him. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Fade for me. Nice little kick back. It's not going to be too bad. Just missed the camera, man. But let's go up there and have a little closer look for the second shot, which I think is going to be dynamite. Now, if the boys coming down here in this position, which I think is going to be the most favourable position because it's a dog leg. If the ball stays straight, this is where they're going to be. Beautiful hole, really is now. Seven iron, just a little one. Just make sure I get my shape. Well, I've overdone the shape, but it's definitely safe. It's going to be hitting the green. It's got the bank, like I said, actually. Oh, and it's running down back onto the back fringe. And now I've got a decent chance of a birdie. Nice fade, Johnny. <laughs> and I know what I'll be writing in with a challenge, Morgie. <laughs> Yeah, that challenge will be very hard for me to do. As we see Howard, it's all rising shot, coming to the back oh. of the green, bit of chubby checker, feeding back to the flag. Yeah, sure. uh, a little 20, 25 footer coming down the slope. Yes, every shot from here on in for Paul Howard is a shot closer to the title. He's got that one shot lead, and it's about hanging on to it, if not improving it. Well, you haven't seen Gareth right for a while. This is why he's at 10 under, just slipped off the pace a little bit, but now coming up the slope and it doesn't come back from there, mate. Not to be for Gareth. Yeah, one of the players we really thought would kick on in this final round. I think, you know, if, you know, stays on this tour, plays a few more events. We will see him up there contending. I mean, the guy is a very solid, solid player. Right, one shot lead, sensible second shot in here. This one's down the green. Oh, a big swing, just cozy it down there by the whole side. Oh. How it's finished there, I oh, never know. Great putt, that would have sealed it. it. Definitely would have sealed it. I mean, that is defied gravity, just like Paul Shields' putt did earlier on. On 17 and he can, Adam and Eve it. Yes, but just, just keep it all under control, young man because you are a few moments away from something very special. Young rolls one past, and he's been a little up and down today as well. I often think when one player in a, in a pairing doesn't quite fire, it, it does just kind of upset the rhythm, and you don't get quite what you're looking for. Yeah, there's no doubt that does happen. Also, the, other, the opposite of that happens as well. Somebody starts knocking some bodies in, you can catch fire as well. Yeah, you sure can, Andrew. It's kind of Ward. What a going to school on Howard's putt. Can his follow in? No, it can't. Just miss on the high side. So tap in then for uh, Simon Ward. Safely done. And let's head to the 18th now and take a look at that with John Morgan. <laughs> well, what a testing final hole. 359 yards. Part four finishing hole. Big deep bunker here on the right hand side in perfect landing zone, unless you get the big boy out and you take it over it. But then you're coming into loads of contours, kicks offs, into rough, out of, into and out of bounds on the right hand side. Not the place you want to be, but this green is awesome. You know, you're coming in, the pin today is tucked on the right hand side, which is so hard to get to. And the boys are going to struggle. As I come in here, you can just see how deep it is. But anyway, 
got to cut to the chase here, right? You're in these fairway bunkers. It's not the easiest thing, but I've got to tell you, just hold your height and nip it off the top. Bit like Sandy Lyle at the Masters. God, what a bunker shot that was, right? Anything like that, I'd be very happy. Now this beautiful big tree, that's at the back of this green, that's my, my aiming. Stand tall, whip it off the top. It should come out absolutely fine. All right, tell you what, that's gotta be good. That's gotta be good. Oh, it was good, John, and this man also has to be good one hole standing between paul howard and his first win as a professional golfer so tee shot at 18 on its way a little nervous look and that's why mm, just caught a swale there and threw it over to the right hand side yeah and as we look at 18 you can just see how beautifully cut it is and poised for a grandstand finish and he's just whacked it just right edge of this bunker and drifted on the wind and very close to the out of bounds and catching this rough on the right hand side by this big tree you see right there now and that's going to be hard for him to muster up a or conjure up a magical shot from there coming into a green like Andrew was saying earlier into a bit of a bowl which can kind of help you and obviously we can't see his ball which says Pretty crazy things, Andrew. Must be sitting down a little bit. Wispy grass running about there. Got to be careful that doesn't catch the hosel and turn this club left. Well, decision to make. And that sounded like it hit something. Yeah, it certainly did. I think that hit the trees, yeah. And no doubt the cameraman wasn't going to be able to fo follow that one because that's obviously changed direction as soon as it clobbered into the tree. I'm trying to maybe punch something in a little bit lower. It popped up. Higher than was expected, caught the branches in the tree. Where's, well, here's where it's finished. Wow. Ooh, well, this you, is you put take a spanner it, in the works, isn't it? You take it. I didn't expect to be working this hard for his fall down the last. Oh, oh that's beautiful. beautiful. Oh, oh, what a majestic shot coming into 18. Talk about totally redeem yourself. Well, no wonder the crowd have gone with this marvellous composure under pressure. No, that's fantastic, and uh, I wish we could sort of wear a heart rate monitor and see what the guys are feeling like. But I had a wonderful shot in there under enormous pressure. Yeah, here, here, Andrew, that would be a great thing to have, actually. See what their hearts are doing. He looks a pretty chilled out character, though, Howard. As we see Ward coming up the slope, not the best of approaches in, but he's got this big, lengthy putt. Oh, and that's a very good touch coming up whole side. Very well done. He's played some good golf for Simon Ward. Not quite what he was after today, but certainly plenty to build on for the young man. Yeah, you can see all the all the fans out in force. This is what it's about, though. Turn pro in February. And just a few months later, this for his professional win. And it's in. Fabulous stuff from Paul Howard as he wins the... Paul Laurie Foundation Granite City Classic here at Newmarket in Aberdeen. Brilliant work from Paul Howard. The young Englishman with a really solid final round gets himself to 15 under to claim his maiden professional victory and it might just be the first of many. Confirmation then of that final leaderboard. Paul Shields is the disappointed man, couldn't quite bring the trophy home for the uh, Scottish fans. Just a single shot behind Howard. And then as you go down through the leaderboard, Gary King will be very pleased with his result. That's a few more pounds in the bank for his race to Desert Springs. And as you look down through this leaderboard, some great names involved. They've played some good golf over the last few days. But time now to hear from the winner with Laura Woods. He must be happy. Um, I'm made up because obviously 10 pro, you're not really sure what's going to happen. So um, to get a win so quickly, it was uh, just brilliant. And what about for the future, so going ahead, all the next events, how confident do you think this will make you feel? Um, yeah, it can only boost my confidence pretty much. I know I can win now, so if, when next time I play Euro Pro event, I know I can take the trophy at the end of the week. So, um, yeah, it's brilliant.
Well, time to take a look at what is developing into a very interesting race to Desert Springs. Gary King with that fabulous two-win start means that he maintains his position at the top of the leaderboard. Those top five positions, all important, but what a difference a win makes. Paul Howard into sixth and going very well indeed. Congratulations then to Paul Howard on his maiden professional victory. Michael McDougall from the Paul Laurie Foundation presenting the trophy here in Newmarket. Now, why not come and join us at Mar Hall in Renfrewshire to get a taste of the PGA Euro Pro Tour. That event runs from July the 15th to the 17th, and we'd love to have you along to watch some great golf. And don't forget to contact us through Twitter or Facebook. We love hearing from you, and keep those Challenge John ideas coming in as well. But for this week, from all of us here, it's goodbye. <laughs>